Well, you know, it's funny. In California, they actually got a ballot referendum through. 53.9% uh, of the voters of California voted for higher taxes, and Jerry Brown's all excited. Now, there's just one problem with that. They could raise taxes on the rich. They can't guarantee the rich are going to stay in California. Same thing holds true for the rich when we look at the country as a whole. You could promise to raise taxes on people. You just can't promise that they're going to be there to pay them or anyone's going to earn that money anymore. Yeah, the top rate in California now is 13.3%. That's just the state tax. But it's even more interesting. They had two uh, propositions on the ballot to raise income taxes. One raised income taxes on everybody, and the other one just raised income taxes on the rich. Well, the one that raised taxes on everybody, that one failed. So people were not willing to vote, raise, to vote to raise their own income taxes, but they were willing to raise the income taxes of somebody else. That is the problem with democracy. Well, you and I both did our radio shows from down at Occupy Wall Street, and it was amazing how uninformed some of these really supposedly smart people were. There's a huge difference between taxing the rich, meaning taxing the wealth, or taxing income. Wealth is money already earned. Income is yet to be earned. So if you're taxing businesses, if you're taxing individuals on future earnings, they might not be, you can't guarantee they're going to earn that. And it's not like they're going to go raiding the bank accounts of all their liberal elite friends. And it's actually, it's actually even worse because when you raise taxes on the upper income earners, in addition to reducing their incentive to earn money in the first place, you are taxing the money that they might otherwise have invested. You see, people that earn a lot of money, they buy whatever it is they want. The money they don't spend is what's left over, and that's the money that's used to grow the economy. That's where capital comes from. That's how businesses grow. That's how they hire people. Well, if you raise taxes on the upper income earners, all you do is you diminish their ability to invest and grow the economy. So if we're going to raise taxes at all, if we really want to you know, reduce a deficit with tax increases, we'd have to raise taxes on the middle class because those are the people who are spending money. And we need to reduce consumption, not investment, if we want economic growth. Isn't it funny how that when we talk about taxes, we only refer to the income tax. We never refer to the taxes that are passed down to us in the form of price increases. So you could tax the upper 1% or 2% or whatever class warfare bracket is politically popular, but then you hit the oil companies, you hit the health care, uh, health insurance companies, you hit doctors, you hit whoever, hit food producers with new regulations, and then magically gas goes up, the price of food goes up, the price of pharmaceuticals goes up, or whatever it is you're nailing to make up for that spending and then everybody pays more but they're not earning more they're just paying more for the same product well you could always assume that all taxes are eventually passed on to the consumer whoever buys the products or buys the services ends up paying all the taxes in the final analysis i mean do you think think about it this way if you raise taxes on a doctor and you raise taxes let's say you took 90 percent of his income do you think he's going to work for the same amount of money or don't you think he's going to say, you know, if the government's taking 90% of my income, I have to really jack up my prices so I can earn enough after tax to survive? Yeah. I mean, and I would assume if you're a good doctor, you're probably making more than 250 But you're right. If you hit the oil companies, they're going to raise their prices. The price of the pump's going to go up. If you hit the doctor, he's going to raise his rates. And what's going to happen to the people who actually pay those taxes is they're going to have less money for, let's say, new clothes or a new car or new restaurants or to take a vacation. They're going to be buying the same thing, especially if it's something that you really, really need. And then they're going to pass off their lack of spending onto other people. And what's funny is I right, always... But it's not the spending that is the most dangerous. It's the fact that they don't have money to buy new capital equipment for their business, or they don't have the extra money to loan out to another entrepreneur to finance his business. If you can't put your savings in a bank, the bank doesn't have the money to make a loan to a small business to start a new company, to hire new workers, to produce new, more products, provide more services. That's what damages the economy the most. It's destroying the seed capital that grows it in the first place.